Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're continuing off from where we left off with essentially building out some basic game states for spawning the player and running the round. So now we're going to end the round and we're probably also going to have some kind of end game state and we're going to be able to sort of replay through multiple times. So to get started with this, let's create a new um, state node, which is just going to be our uh, round end state. And then I think we should also probably create one for, um, for the ending of the game. So let's essentially just do this. So we get into the round state and I think all it should do is it should count the amount of rounds that we played. So I think let's do a serialized field, private int uh, amount of rounds. Let's just do, let's just do three for testing. Uh, and then let's go into the enter override. And essentially whenever we enter, I think let's just iterate up on a number. So let's do private int underscore round count. We'll be starting from zero and then round count we just iterate up every time we reach it and then i think we should set it back to the previous state so i think we serialize field private state node and we should go back to the uh, spawning state so we just do machine dot set state and then we set the spawning state cool and i also think we need to in the spawning state before we just spawn players we should probably uh, destroy the current players that are spawned so in order to do that we can do that very easily First of all, I think let's split up our logic a little bit. Our enter method here is getting big. So let's do a private void spawn players. And then we take all of this spawn logic. We put it in here and we run that from here. Oh, and I guess this is expecting a spawn players list. So what we can do is we can just return the type of this list. So in the end, we'll just return spawn players like that. That's very clean. And then here we just have it uh, spawned players equals to spawn players. Cool. So now we get the list back out. So we essentially populate the list in here. We return it here, return it back as a variable here that we then feed the state machine. If you really wanted to make it short, you could technically take this and just put it in here. But uh, I prefer keeping it sequential like this. I think it reads a little better. Cool. And then we essentially also first want to despawn players. So let's make a method for that as well. So let me go down and make a private void despawn players. And there's many ways we can do this. I think one of the easiest ones is probably just quickly find them all because we're already on the server. We're pretty much ensuring that we are on the server at this point. So let us run the despawn player stuff. So let me first find all the players. So let's do var all players and then let's do find objects by type. And this will probably be player health. It's probably the best one to just get. And we search like that. Now this requires the search type. So first of all, if it should search, including or excluding active objects and also which filtering mode it should use, in which case I just do none because we just want to find them all. The order of them doesn't matter. Uh, and then we can pretty much just for each through them, do each for all players, I can say player. And then we can just do destroy. Uh, and then we do the player dot game object. And I think that should be it. Now we essentially destroy all players first. So what we do is we just we destroy all players we then spawn all the new players and we go to the next state. Cool, so let's go and test this out. So let's make the new state. Let's do the uh, round end state, let's put it in here. Let's put it in the state machine like so. Perfect. And let's try and hit play. And if I didn't forget something, oh, of course we need to populate this with the player spawn state, which is the state we wanted to go back to. Cool, and if I didn't forget anything, this should hopefully just work now. So we're here, we're essentially waiting for the other player. Boom, now we've got the other player. He comes here, he shoots our host. Boom, there we go, he dies, someone won the round. Oh, I guess we forgot to actually go next when someone wins the round, so let's do that. So here, someone won the round, let's do machine.next. Um, and maybe let's just add a little bit of a delay. I think that'll, that'll just be nice. I guess let's actually not add it here. Let's add it on the uh, end state. And um, yeah, you know what, let's just first of all add the, the, the delay in here. So let's do private i enumerator, which is just the easiest way for us to make a quick delay. Um, let's just call it delay next state, something like that. And essentially we will just create a new private, wait for seconds, which I'm sure you might be familiar with. We'll just call this delay and let's just make it a new three second delay. We can just initialize it up here. And then we do yield return our delay and then we run the next state like so. And so we need to start this coroutine up here like that. There we go. It's just going to be a little nicer because then it doesn't just immediately jitter us back. But we're actually going to be able to have three seconds where we realize someone won. And then we go to the next state. Cool. So our client here is going to come again. It's going to shoot us down to zero health. We're going to see someone won. We're going to wait a little bit. And boom. There we go. Now he was respawned and he's back here where he came from. You can see the same thing if the 
Host goes and shoots you. Shoot him in the back. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. He's dead. And there we go. We're back. Cool. Uh, I noticed, though, that our health isn't resetting. So let's definitely do something about that. I think that's because it isn't set to be set initially on spawned. Yeah. So initially when we spawn, let's also set the health here. So you see an on health change. We essentially set it like this. I think let's also just set it back to... Um, essentially what our starting health is which i guess in this case is just 100 so we could just we could just set that but we could also just do health that value should do the same thing let's just quickly test that that also works just in before we go any further so there we go we're gonna kill him he's at zero when he respawns there we go. now he's at 100 cool so we're now back at 100 health and that all works fine awesome now let's make the logic for the ending state as well so let me just make a new object immediately. Game and state. And then let's make the state node. I'm gonna do game and state. And we're gonna immediately, of course, make it into a state node. Like so. Whoops. I don't know what it just did. There we go. State node. I'm gonna remove this. And then when we enter the state, we essentially have uh, you know our game ended state. So let's just debug out debug.log just so everyone sees it. Game has now ended. Cool. And then in our round end state, I'll just drag that to the beginning together with the game end state. There we go. Now, what we essentially got to do is we got to check the amount of rounds, right? So the first time around, it was one round. Second time, it'll be two rounds. And then third time, of course, we want to check if the round count, if round count is greater than amount of rounds. Then we essentially want to return here and we want to move to the machine.next. There we go. So now we just want to move to the next state if the amount of rounds have exceeded. Um, and I guess it should be greater than or equals to like that. I think that should work. So let's just go test that out really quickly. That should luckily be easy enough to test. So let's remember to add the game end state here. Let's add it in the list here, like so. I save and I hit play on both. And I'll just go and hit him. There we go, enough times. Someone won the round. We can go shoot him. Boom, boom. Someone won the round. Cool. And boom, 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 boom. Someone won the round and game has now ended. Cool. Yeah, so you can see now we got to play three rounds and that seems to just work. Also, I realize in here, in the round end state, we're of course doing this uh, also if we're not the server. So let's also just do if it's not a server, we return. I should have done that in all places. It shouldn't break anything, but it will call some uh, errors on the client. It will call some errors on the client, which is just like this. Only the controller can set the state. Non-owner tried to set the state, which of course is not good because only the server is the controller at this point. All right, cool. Let's make sure we don't make that mistake anywhere else. Uh, so I can just quickly check them through. I don't want to make that mistake there. We're returning. Play a spawning state. We're returning. Okay, I think it I think it looks good. Do we have another state? I don't I barely remember. That's the wait for players. Oh, yep, we do the same thing here. Let's just do if as server we return. Or if it's not as server, of course, we return like that. Great. All right, so now we essentially have what is a full gameplay loop. Now let's just quickly add some basic level of scoring. I think that would be very fitting for the game here. Um, and I think it makes sense for us here to, um, why do we control the scores? I guess we control the scores already back from the player controller because this is when we're spawning the players and then we can also create some data for each player. Um, so remember how in the player spawning state, we're sending data essentially of the players that were spawned. I think here's what we do. We keep, track of the players on the uh, round end state here. So what we essentially want is we want to send through who won the round. Um, and so let's track that by the player ID. So we want the player ID through here and this player ID now will be who is the winner. So let's take the data as well here. So this will be the winner. You can just name it whatever we want. And now we go, now we're entering with our data here. And now we're essentially able to track who won the game. Right, so let's do a private dictionary that we can keep track of here. And this private dictionary will be of player ID to integer, which will essentially be, let's do call it round wins, yeah? I think that's a good name. And we just make it a new, great. And what we essentially want to do now is every time that we reach in here, we'll iterate up on the winner. So let's first of all check if the round wins contains the key of the player, of the player ID, which is the winner, whoops, winner, like that. So if it does not contain it, we want to add it. And then essentially what we want to do is we want to do round wins at the at the winner's ID plus plus like that. So if it doesn't exist, we'll just add it to the dictionary. And regardless of whether if it exists or not, now we've just created it, we'll then iterate it up. So this way we're able to keep track of how many round wins who has. 
And what we can do with this is we can send this through to the next state essentially. So we'll go to the next state, which is the game end state, which should then now take in this type of dictionary to play ID. I hope this makes sense. Hopefully isn't too uh, involved, should hopefully make sense. I just added the using references up here with the magical alt enter again. And then here, of course, we need to take this in. This will be round winners or round wins, I guess we can call it again for consistency. And essentially here, we now need to check who is the winner uh, or the total winner. Uh, I guess also on the uh, round end state. Yeah, on the round end state, we, what do we do here? Uh, on the round end state, yeah, we no longer debug this out. We'll instead want to debug out who the winner is. So let's do a debug.log um, and then let's do winner has won the round. Cool. So now we have that. And now in the running round state, when we go next, we essentially want to send through here who is the actual winner, um, which I guess is why it's a good idea that we keep track of this. Yeah, because when the player dies, we can then remove them from the list, remove the dead player, which uh, let's do, 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 do. Let's just store it here. So let's do a private list of player health. I'm not sure this is necessarily the cleanest way of doing it, but it should work. So essentially keeping track of the players here, we'll remove them as they come in. And of course we will set this list equals to the data that comes in. And then whenever they die, uh, we essentially remove them from the list, which means we don't need to keep track of players alive like this anymore because we can just keep track of the lists count. So we can just take players.count. And if that goes less than or equal to one, I guess now we should also catch the case of no one winning. So we'll essentially do if underscore players that count is equal to one. Yeah, we'll essentially send through the player's owner. And otherwise, if it doesn't exist, we will just go next with no data. Um, I think this should work. And then if we go into the round ending state, we can actually still make the enter method here, uh, which that now this will essentially catch the case of getting no data in here, which means round had end, has ended with no winner, right? So we can do this and then we can essentially run the exact same logic. So we can copy this in order to not copy code. We can do private void, uh, check for game end essentially. I guess like that, we'll just copy this in here and we'll call this in both places. So we'll do that and we'll do that. Cool. So this should now work and yeah, now we're able to iterate up. We are sending through who the winner is. And now essentially the game ending state would just need to tell us who is the winner. But first of all, let's just check that this winner declaring actually works. Always a big fan of testing on the way. Let's just make sure we haven't made any silly mistakes. So I'll run up here, shoot him 10 times. Oh, argument type of nullable. There we go. I already have an issue, which is probably because he was despawned if I had to guess. Well, that's interesting. He should exist. Uh, let's do... And it does not equal to null. But the question is, why is he null? I guess he already despawned. I guess maybe what we do instead then here, we can do we can do something a little smart. We can essentially keep a list, which I think is cleaner of the player IDs. And yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be keeping. Uh, we're still going to be subscribing to their on death. But instead of sending the player health through, I think we should send the player ID of the player who died. So like this, we'll send the owner like so dot value and then in the round running state now this will be expecting type of list of player id i think no wait hold on no i still think it expects this type right that's still what we're sending through um again i've told this in other videos or other ones before so we're doing this on the fly so let me see i'm still yeah i'm still sending the list of player health through <clears throat> and now we can essentially put these into um, our list of players here. Plus two equal to new. And this will be in our data pool. I guess we are already iterating through all of them actually, so I don't need to do that again. Uh, we're essentially just doing underscore players dot add the player dot owner. Uh, and is that because it is unknown? I think it's just cause value. And we'll only do this if the player has a value. So if owner dot has value like that, then we'll do it. Uh, I'll explain this in a little bit just to avoid it being too confusing. This of course needs to now expect player ID, which means we don't actually need that anymore. And we need to remove the dead player and we can now send this through, which no, sorry, shouldn't be sending the dead player through. We should just be sending that through. All right, I think this should do it. Unless if I've confused something, let me first of all, just test in before I start actually explaining 
the logic, because it could be flawed. So just let me shoot him. Bam, 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 bam. And there we go. Car player two has won the round. And if we do the same thing here, it should say player one has won the round. It did not. Oh, I think that is because we need to clear the player's list here in the beginning. Let us look clear. Let's just try that once again. Make sure that actually works. Let's also remove this hit debug. We really don't need this anymore. It's just filling out the logs. Starting the game, starting the game. Gonna run up here. Shoot him 10 times. There we go. Player two has won the round. And then our host is gonna run up here. And there we go. Player one has won the round. Okay, great. That works. And it should work, obviously, also a third time. Just making sure. Great, there we go. Player one has won the round and the game has now ended. And the only thing now we need to do is just declare who has won and we can start working on more stuff next time around. Cool. So let's just do this very quickly. I think this would be interesting homework for you too, but let me first of all just explain what it is that we were actually doing here because I can understand why it might be a little confusing. Uh, so essentially the player is being despawned, obviously when they are dead, which makes total sense, <clears throat> means that we can't just easily get their owner because uh, essentially the object is null. It doesn't exist. And so what I'm doing instead is when we're spawning them in the player spawning state, I am essentially just sending through everything that we did before, it pretty much exactly the same. But in the round running state, when we receive them, we now keep track of all the player IDs. And essentially what's happening now is when they die, they will announce what player ID dies, not what exact player object died, but what player ID, because that's all we're keeping track of. And that's essentially all we need to be able to cross reference. So now we have this list of player IDs, which is why it needs to be cleared when we enter the state, because obviously it needs fresh data. So when it wasn't cleared, that was a problem. And I think we probably have the same in our round ending state, because we also keep track of round wins here. Um, and we would probably at some point when we uh, move on to the next one here, we we'll probably want to clear it as well, just for good measure. Right. <clears throat> Actually, we don't want to clear it. I, uh, I'm sorry. We don't want to clear this. The reason why we don't want to clear this is because it's a dictionary, which is a class, which is a reference. So we're essentially sending a reference through. So we want to keep that reference. So we'd probably want to do something with it here because we get the reference and then clear it. Um, I hope that makes sense because it's not a struct, so we're not copying it. We're essentially referencing it, the, the other one. Um, I hope that makes sense. Or actually maybe, no, you know what, that's fine. We do this. Um, and then I think probably what it wanted to do here is probably right. Uh, nope, that is not correct. Um, okay. And all we essentially need to do now is we essentially need to find the winner. So what we can do is we can say winner is equal to, and then we, let's just get the first one in the dictionary. And then what we can do is we can for each through it and we can essentially uh, take each one of the round wins and we can just take, uh, let's call this potential winner just to make that clear. So this is essentially all the players. I guess let's just call it player. That might be more clear. Uh, and then we'll say if player dot value, which is the amount of wins that we have is greater than our current winner dot value, then that is our new winner. And this now means that we can now call this game has ended with and then we'll do winner being our champion. So it should now work and let's test it out uh, where we essentially have the client shooting the server once and the server then shooting the client twice, which should give us the player ID. So you can see player ID two now killed once. Now player ID one will kill once and this should end up giving us the player ID of one as the winner, as the final announcement winner. So let's have a look at that. And there you go. You can now see that it says that Zero has now won, oh sorry, zero, zero, 001 has won the round, which you can see here with two wins being our champion. Awesome. So we now essentially have pretty much the full gameplay loop logic from, you know, joining into the game, waiting for all players to be ready, spawning the players, running the rounds as many times as we want to run them and declaring a win at the end. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope this was helpful to you. In the next video, we'll be looking more into, you know, properly tracking kills and deaths and also you know being able to show it on ui so we can synchronize it and so on so hopefully this was helpful to you i hope that you have a wonderful day